I make one comment and bring up one person and immediately it's vinegar and vitriol that he's a whiner. This isn't politics. This is gaming. This isn't the Republicans versus the Democrats. This isn't one party versus another. This is a video game. This is not Samito versus Frito with the 6v6 versus the 5v5 groups. But my name is Will and today we are reacting to Samito's video called The Favoritism and Overwatch Balance is getting out of hand. So, so I do have some opinions on this. I did watch it earlier uh, when it came out. And now I'm going to, you know, give some commentary about what I believe, uh, feel regarding this video. I'm sick of the blatant favoritism, the hypocrisy, the double standard game design that Team 4 has practiced in Overwatch 2. They made some big promises about addressing and changing the game in 5v5 rapidly. They made a lot of promises about 5v5 where, you know, you have videos like Flats reacting to himself, reacting to the Overwatch 2 announcement where they were claiming things like... Two main tanks were too oppressive in Overwatch 1. Which is ludicrous really. statements that just indicate they clearly never understood the game that they had. And that same problem is going on now. Thank God they're looking for more. I don't know if you guys saw this. They're looking for more core hero de designers to help out their balance team. Who Lord knows needs the help. Because man, they have been all over the place with what they say they want to do. And then what they actually implement into the game. And today, we're going to be ranting about one of the things that somehow, some way. 12 seasons into this game. Now, I've not seen the season 12 packs. They, I, I doubt they nerfed this, though, in season 12. If they nerfed this in season 12, I will eat a sock, and I will buy them and bake them a cake, and I will deliver it to Irvine, California myself. I feel like but he wouldn't. As I, really, right now, I really don't think he would do the that. Dev's unwillingness to address how broken Widowmaker is, especially at high-level play, is ludicrous. Widowmaker is the most unfair, overpowered DPS in the game. I, and I do agree with that, that she is incredibly overpowered, considering how far away she can physically kill you. Especially if you're not a good DPS, Widow will take lobbies hostage. If, especially since if you have like a tank that refuses to go and like dive them, or a Sombra that hard focuses them. Like whenever I get a Widowmaker in my matches, I will either, if I'm doing BPS, I will just hard focus as Sombra on her, or I will tell somebody if I'm playing tank to go and like hard focus her. Cause that makes more sense. Cause I will make sure to just bully effectively a Widowmaker, which isn't fun for the game. And it's not fun for that person that I would hard dive to the point to where I am solely focusing on that person alone just to kill them because I know that if nothing is done about the Widowmaker, they will just take over the entire lobby. I have lost a lot of games to people who refuse to either switch to deal with them and I have to solo deal with them. But the moment I do that, they peel for them and they go and protect them with everything they have. And then I'll eventually just die because my team refuses in comp refuses to actually do something about it and go and help me out with it because they're not in comms and i'm like is anyone in comms is anybody talking to i see people in chat i'll see in the channel it'll be uh like one or four people in there's like okay cool everybody's in here why is nobody talking why is nobody saying anything i it, it doesn't happen until after we've already like say um uh, my most recent example was in junker town right we at this point had already gone through the whole gambit and we were attacking and my tank finally decided to say something but only after we had already completed the game twice already why didn't they say anything during the beginning they were being hard countered and we told them hey get off diva go switch to arisa because you're being hard focused and they refused until literally we were defending then they decided to do that and we started to do a lot better but we ultimately ended up losing it's like why didn't you let them start why aren't you talking to them? this is and i'm i'm so happy they have the ping system and that's besides the point let's get back to the video now that doesn't mean that she's the absolute strongest dps in the game right now what i mean by that is like brigida and overwatch one for every season that she was in the game she rewards you too much for what she requires and just to be frank with you she's insanely unfun to play against blizzard going she's into that Overwatch, is true. into 5v5 acknowledge that without two tanks spacing becomes way more open there's one less tank player on the map right so one shots ended up becoming oppressive mm -hmm. that was the claim that people made this is the path we chose to go down now, you could argue if one-shots have a place in Overwatch or not. That's fine, they but most that's not where do. I want to take this discussion. The reality is, the decision that was made was that one-shots were too overpowered, and this is the path we chose to go down. Mm -hmm. So naturally, you would assume the most powerful one-shot, the most unanswerable one-shot in the game would be addressed by Blizzard. Yeah, they did it for Hanzo. But they did no, for Junkrat. they will address every single one-shot combo 
except for the most oppressive, unanswerable one in the game. For example, Doomfist got moved to the tank roll. He can no longer one-shot. Mm -hmm. Junkrat's mind combo, which felt like a one-shot, gets addressed and gets gutted, removed from the game entirely. Well, we okay. did fix that, I think, Hanzo's in this patch notes. entire character identity gets deleted from the game, and he feels awful to play. And yeah, okay it is. I haven't touched him since Overwatch 1, which is but sad. how in the world, Blizzard, in what world does Widowmaker, who has the highest scope critical hit rate mm -hmm. in, in the DPS role, higher scoped accuracy than Hanzo, she has yeah. better accuracy, a this higher crit rate, more damage on her headshot than Hanzo did, better range... On her headshot than Hanzo did because Hanzo had bullet velocity and bullet drop. Yeah, and her better escape options than Hanzo did. How is a hero that is the most egregious example of one shots being oppressive not been touched in a game where there isn't a second tank to actually control space and check that one shot in a game where the support abilities to bail out the dive against that target, which is the only way to answer it other than counter sniping on Widowmaker. Yeah, and you have to be good or have somebody protecting you. Because the bailout abilities in the are more accessible than they've ever been before. Alari Pylon can permanently protect the Widow from the dive with without anyone playing the game. Kiriko can instantly TP across the map and Suzu somebody making them invulnerable. Mm -hmm. Life grip exists in the game. Mm -hmm. Brick packs now burst heal. Yep. Bap shift now burst heals. Mm -hmm. Although they think they, they reduce and that. And instead of having a tank who actually has the survivability and uptime to check and zone the space, now as a DPS player, because there is no off tank, I am forced to try to quickly dive and burst down a Widowmaker. Yeah through stronger support abilities with significantly less uptime than an off tank had. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to address the one shots, how have we not addressed Widowmaker? It is not fun getting one shot across the map when you can't even see the character because you guys didn't even add a scoped glint to Widow. Oh yeah, that is true. They should really add that to Widowmaker. And I never really thought about that. But yeah, even in what Call of Duty, you can have that. At least most of the games. I know some of them don't. But it is nice to have that. So you could be able to tell that there's somebody like in the distance. Even if they're not looking at you, the moment they scope in at all, it should be able to see something. Because you'll walk around the corner or walk around in any area and the moment, and they're just waiting. They're just staring for you to get there. And then you walk out and you instantly die because they're just sitting there waiting and the entire time, either being pocketed by mercy so they could get increased damage. And then you could instantly die. I know that they had reduced the range to Widowmaker. They were able to show that at least on, it was Havana. Right. So in Havana, they were able to show the clear distance and reduction from insta kills. But that's still a lot. I mean, I know they can't have it be where Widowmaker is the type of a infinite range DPS. And nor can they make it be where Widowmaker is a, a DPS that's a sniper that closer range. Like that's what Hanzo's for. Hanzo is very much a close range sniper in my opinion, right? Like he doesn't have the ability to zoom in from far away. You have to use math essentially to aim at an angle and fire it and calculate for the travel velocity and the, uh, the distance that it's going and whether or not that person's going to move. Okay, that's why he's a lot better at bursting down tanks in the front, which is a whole lot different from what he used to be. Granted, I remember, and it was never fun playing against Hanzo when he did have scatter arrow. Because even I, playing as either Roadhog, which I never like playing as Roadhog, but Roadhog, for example, right? He could almost essentially one-shot, if not one-shot, Roadhog when all of the arrows hit him directly, you know? And they're like, that's like an instant death, which essentially is almost like an ult on a cooldown, which is not fun or fair. It is nice to have, but it's also not good to have it when you're on the receiving end of it, especially if you're a tank player who's just trying to exist in the front line while you're fighting. You know, granted, you did have your second tank with you, but that wasn't always something that would essentially help you out. But let's, let's get back to the point. There's been nothing done. Nothing. When she is the most, she is objective, and, and I want to challenge this too. People say, well, Widow takes skill and Hanzo doesn't. Widow does take Projectile skill, but Hanzo does take skill too. Are harder and require more skill than hit skin yeah. heroes. I'm because not it's saying not hit skin is a skillless role. Don't do not take what I said there like that. Okay, Widowmaker does mm -hmm. take skill. That is not Absolutely. the issue. 
It's why does Widow get to be hit scan, which again has higher accuracy. If 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 hit scan is harder, why does it have higher accuracy stats across the board? And why does it have higher critical rates across the board? The whole role. Because you don't have to actually account for where the player is going to move. And I'm not it's saying that mostly, project It's mostly because you're taking into consideration the fact that they have it takes a bit of time to um, load up a shot because you always want to do it 100%. And also, when you hit something, it's an instant hit. And you're accounting for both of those. Hanzo, you can just constantly just keep lobbing arrows, right? You could just tap it and it'll fire. Same thing for Widowmaker. You could tap it when you're zooming in and do it every 1%, but you're going to burn through your armor really quickly. This is why she has a higher accuracy because of that, because you have to wait. You're not going to fire at 50% at a target that is down across the map. You're going to wait for it to load. Now, it, it's different if they're closer to you. At that point, you're flick shotting them, but you're also getting increased damage because you're not having any drop off from across the map. And because of the lineup it takes for you to be able to do the actual firing, because you have to wait for the percentage to get to 100%. That ultimately is what helps with the critical rate. Because you're trying to hit them in the head. You know that if you hit them in the head, you're going to get a kill. Or do a lot of damage. And when you're fighting against a tank that isn't giving you any attention. Or as a tank that can't dive you. Like Reinhardt. Or Ramatra. Or Zarya. Or even Roadhog. Right? If they were like well without of the range. You could just sit there and take pot shots on at them the entire time and you could eventually kill them well before they could even get too close to you and if they do try to do anything to you like reiner tries to fire shark you, you you that thing takes a while to get to where you're at it's not quick it's a projectile you can step out of the way wait for it to go by and wait to see if he tries to do a second time which is what i usually do i'll usually do two fire strikes right back to back or wait a second so that way i could do it again because they'll they'll sit there and wait and go all right, there's one fire strike, there's two fire strikes, and then they go out there and they start unloading you on again. It's the same thing like what Joker did in the Dark Knight, okay? When the guy asks, how many rounds did he fire? Oh, is he all out? And he's like, oh, yeah, maybe. It's like, no, he miscounted. You know why he miscounted? Because he wasn't paying attention. Well, actually, no, technically, he, he you know, did that on purpose. Anyway, the point is, when you are when you know how a tank is going to act based on how many times you've had to encounter them, you know you could predictably do what they're going to do and know what they're going to do. And so you could account for that. Say, let's take King's Row, for example, right? You have a high point that looks over two spots. You know, one of them has more advantage. We're not counting the ones that lead up to it on the uh, higher ground. And we're not talking the one that's across that you have to, you know, grapple or jump to. We're talking about the ones that they're already on point. They're already brawling or fighting on point. You have two positions, one that looks directly down and takes the entire spot and the other one that takes some of it. That takes at least, you know, the left portion of it. And you could at least have some area within there because they're trying to frontline. That's the whole point of the tank is trying to frontline and make space. However, they are walking into a space that they cannot defend because they chose a tank that cannot go after you. Diva go after you, Winston go after you, Ball go after you. But when you don't have that, you essentially have free reign. And I know that's not saying the same thing for like, oh, well, uh, well Hanzo does the exact thing, you know, and you know, or uh, why should he be punished for uh, doing this, you know? And I understand that, but like at the end of the day, he will at least have some kind of travel time and he isn't able to just instantly zoom and pick a target out. He has to aim. He has to be able to go around and do things the same that she can but with less accuracy. He has to account, like I said before, with trajectory, with the time it's gonna take for it to get there. And he does significantly less damage than her because if he's not hitting you in the head, he's hitting the body, which you can get healed from. And if the person who is, uh, say like, you know, any other hit scan or even a Zen, it can just be lobbing damage at you as they are going around in an area trying to get a better angle at you. And you, even though you're already pulled, you have to look around for them and that time, that you try to fire and not get insta kill, they're already still constantly lobbing damage at you. Not including the fact that a junk rat, if say you know a junk rat finds you, he will then go and kill you. That's usually what happens. Style heroes should always be better than hit scan heroes. Please don't take it like that. And I think everybody at home could probably understand what I'm saying. But when you really think about it, just because oh sometimes the Hanzo can hit a lucky RNG shot does not mean and that Hanzo is less skillful than Widow. No, he's not. It does not. You have to account for more when aiming on projectile heroes than you do on hit scan. Hit scan mm -hmm. is easier. So why does this hit scan Absolutely. hero that has better dive peel in this game 
less things to contest them in this game, when getting a one-shot kill is significantly more valuable and harder to turn in this game, why does she get to keep her one-shot just because she's the sniper character, but everyone yeah. else, heroes like Hanzo, lose theirs? There is no answer. You guys are hypocrites. Your design philosophy has been insanely hypocritical, and I challenge anybody. Name another DPS hero that could go 10 and 10 and still hold every fight hostage and be the most value, the most important target to go on in the game. Yeah, there because no the one they get a pick, like that. that's but because it. They're the done. Threat of the, the fight's over, essentially. The fight is over. Picking off one of your squishies from any angle exists. She's the most important target to go on regardless of the player skill. Mm -hmm. At any rank above Diamond, you can notice it. She is an insane crutch hero that dominates ranked when she's picked because she has to be dull first every fight. Yes. Because she has the threat of the one shot. So Blizzard, I need somebody to explain to me how it's acceptable for Hanzo to get gutted, Junkrat to get gutted, Doomfist to get moved to the tank roll and remove his one shot, Hog to have some changes but to still kind of have his. Yeah. Kinda. Sojourn to lose hers. How is it okay for all of those heroes to lose theirs when we claim that one shots are oppressive, but Widowmaker remains untouched. And not only does she remain untouched, but if you guys think that she should maintain her one shot, you don't try to compensate with nerfs to the other parts of her kit. She can grapple out of any dive for free. Like they haven't even tried. They have not even tried to make the character more fair or fun to play against. Because no. how valuable a one shot is across the map when there's not an off tank to contest it, when there's way better support abilities to easily, easily bail someone out. Mm -hmm. There is no downside that they tried to implement. And like, they, like here are some things like I can oh, understand. They can like, I get damage. it sometimes. Where That's people are like, well, Widow loses her leg. entire identity if you do her, her one shot. Okay, but what about Hanzo? You did that to Hanzo. You killed him. Why can't you kill yeah. Widow too? It's, it's either one or the other. It's not both. Sorry, it's, it, it's either both. It's not one or the other. You can't pick and choose your favorites, Blizzard. If one-shots are oppressive, how have you not addressed the most rampant, oppressive, easy-to-hit one-shot in the entire game? How? It needs to be a how full you blanket statement. You can't cherry pick what's going on. You're hypocrites or you just are delusional. So here are some suggestions that I'm going to give the team, right? Because again, Widow also does have some SMG options. It's not as good as Storm House, sure. And you could say Hanzo's a bit of a brawler as well. But oh, it is horrible right now. so bad, though. It Everybody is Everybody knows this. Horrible He's dog shit. He's that. terrible. Horrible. And the only answer is hit scan bias, but listen to this. Let me, let me let me give some proposed solutions, okay? Because the support abilities are all stronger, if you want say that you cannot get rid of what widow's one shot, right? For whatever reason, oh well, we need the hit scan sniper or else the game shit. Like you could give her some damage over time, you could give her way better fall-off, you could reduce the amount of headshot damage in general, so it doesn't maybe one shot everybody. You could do mm -hmm. anything. But let's say that you absolutely cannot do that. Which is bullshit, by the way. Give Hanzo back his one shot if that's the angle we're going with. Why is her grapple agree with not that. getting nerfed? Make her commit yeah. to her position, right? Or give the so uh, other dove, ones like better abilities. It's not instant immortality cooldowns, and then a grapple away too. Because as a Sombra, right, for example, or a Tracer, if I'm diving the Widowmaker in the back, I don't have infinite uptime. Like if I was an off tank or like a Diva, and I go on that Widowmaker, right, in, in Overwatch One. Because I'm a tank and I have cooldowns that allow me to occupy space for longer periods of time, it's easier to contest that Widow and keep the one shot in check. That power balance, especially when one elimination was worth less in Overwatch 1 than Overwatch 2, is way easier to manage. I, I, I thought she was OP as fuck and ruined the game in Overwatch 1 when she was getting picked, but like it was definitely more answerable. It was definitely mm -hmm. more answerable than it was in this game. So yeah, why is it you get a, that now you get a full diver. isn't a second tank to actually occupy the space to contest this character, especially on maps where she's at a range where she's undoable by 80 mm -hmm. to 90 percent of the cast, undoable, yeah. undoable. And if you go on her, you get killed by the other people. You can't just go do it, right? It's impossible. Yeah, because why then they start to focus you because they understand that, that you're still also gets the to main keep threat. Mobility options. Why does a sniper that has the best one shot in the game have a grapple that gets her out of a dive for free? While she gets to one-shot anybody attempting to dive her from across the map. Giving her the advantage, by the way. Widowmaker has I, the advantage. I mean, they could either, either like, the increase the range, increase she the does. cooldown. Because she can one-shot them while they're jumping. Especially in ranked. Like, you could sit there and say, well, actually, Samito, in pro play, she's not that good because she just gets dove and she's bad. Ranked is not fucking pro play. That's why yeah. you see Widow dominant in ranked all the time. Because it's not going to happen. And everybody knows this. Nobody talks in ranked because everyone's getting fucking permabanned for saying somebody's shit. 
Nobody, nobody's even slurring it anymore and ranked it. Well, I guess the kids who are slurring are still slurring. But, you know, people are just talking and competing and they're getting banned. So nobody comms anymore. So you I don't know, have the comms true. to coordinate a dive. Suck. She can one-shot you from across the I map. I just tell people about it. Do I don't really cuss at people because, you like, know, I don't want to get banned. Immeasurably strong. The strongest abilities in the game are on the support role that will automatically mm -hmm. deny anything that you do. With the Suzu, yeah. the Pylon, the Life Grip, the Drone, the Bap Shift, Brig Packs now, Burst Heal. It is significantly easier to peel a target on support in 5v5 and Overwatch 2 with the changes they've made than it was in Overwatch 1. So why does she get to grapple? The, the thing I have issue with the break thing that he's talking about is the burst healing. It's like, yes, that can happen. But you're talking about people who know what they're doing. People who absolutely know what they're doing with break can and will be able to do that. Not everybody does that. Not everybody is Samito. Not everybody, even a personal analogy for me, my ex fiance is a uh, brig main. Has probably more hours on brig than I do on my main, which is Reinhardt. And I have like 323 hours. So I know that she has more. But she's not oppressive. She's not so good that she is able to do a lot of things. She makes a lot of mistakes. When I sometimes catch her playing Overwatch on Twitch, I see her dying a lot. I see her not being able to hit her abilities. I see her wasting her ultimate in a fight that they've already lost. I watch her do this. And that's that's the only thing I could disagree with, Demito, is if you're good with Brig, absolutely. If you're not, no. Burst healing doesn't matter because not everybody knows how to play it at a level to where that is very impactful and meaning. Those who do, do not stay in a lower rank. They go up. Those who don't, don't get past Diamond because she was in Diamond until the rank reset. Then she dropped on the plat. And it's like, okay, that, under that at least shows that you did not know what you were doing because if you knew what you were doing, you would maintain your Diamond rank. I've increased in my rank. I'm gone up. I'm currently working my way through plat. When I used to be like in gold, but that's because I had just barely transitioned to play mouse and keyboard. I only barely started that when Overwatch 2 came out. And even then, I think it took me like a year to do that. So I haven't been playing for that long on mouse and keyboard. But even still, accuracy has gone up so much. I've learned how to play other tanks that I never did. Orisa, Zarya, Ramatra, Junker Queen. Tanks that I never would have considered. Even Roadhog. I'm able to hit shots because I'm actually able to have better accuracy because I'm putting in more effort into learning things instead of just a uh, big hammer I swing. So that's the only thing I'll disagree with Samito about Brigida being super overpowered. Overpowered to a point. Overpowered if you're at a high enough skill ceiling to where it, you can effectively do this and effectively use her abilities anything less than that you might as well pick somebody else honestly out for free if she's going to have her one shot she absolutely must commit to her position so she can be punishable it is the only way to make it fair and you could sit here and say oh well sweetie that makes i don't know how horrible. they could do that though well tough shit we chose to go to 5v5 we're here now what we should just leave her broken should we have left hog the way he was should we have left hanzo the no. way he was should Maybe. we have left Sojourn the way she was? No. Which is it? Should we have left Junkrat the way he was? Which is yeah. it? Yeah. We've committed to this path, and yet Blizzard refuses I mean, to address no, not really, because it was the even, most oppressive like, I would do it, I was like, man, I just instantly killed that person. Because it's that hero's identity. But they'll do it for Hanzo. Double you standard, hypocritical. Yeah, you can't double standard. Game you design. have to hypocritical commit game and be like, this, you everybody. You guys cannot pick and choose your favorites. Because if something what is happens a problem, to Hanzo's identity, you must address if, it. That's your it defense. Oh, it's part of their identity. What happened to Hanzo's identity? Nerf Widow. Does it not matter? Or Why does Widowmakers matter more? Man. Because, oh, she has less abilities? It's so did Hanzo. Person. And you gave him new abilities. She's the most consistent. You, gave, you switched out uh, Scatter Rope for Storm Arrow. You gave him a, 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 a dash. The least amount of fall off, the best range, and ironically, the best mobility out of any of the snipers. How? Yes. How does this Which, stay alive for this? I, 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 I and she's me. the only character. Because uh, the point I, I do agree with him on this is like you have, she has the best mobility. She could grapple and go away and say, see ya. If you as a Samba, Sombra had to get up there, take um, Havana behind the sign on first point. All right, you've already made the turn over the corner uh, and made the left and you're about, and you're starting to head down the path where you're going to make a right to go straight again. What happens is you have to TP up there, right? You have to translocate up there to then start shooting her she will jump down right you will follow her then she could grapple up and you have to then sit there and wait for your cooldown to come back and by the time that happens she could either get life gripped or they can heal her or they will turn around and start focusing you because you're sitting there waiting to tp again or translocate up there again 
And they know that you're going after her, which means they're going to start protecting her. And it then becomes from a 1v1 to a 5v1. Because your team is so far down the path away from you because you were able to sneak by and slither on your way through there because you're invisible to get to where she's at only to then realize you are by yourself and the rest of your team will not be able to peel for you unless you have a life uh, weaver who can life review you back out of there. That doesn't stop the fact that now the only thing that was contesting her, the like contesting the widow, was you as the Sombra, is now gone because they had to save your ass to bring you back to a fight and then that gives Widowmaker again the ability to then start one-shotting you again. You will then have to maneuver your way now in the middle of a fight that is now closer to protecting her to then try to get to her while your squishies, your supports, your other DPS, right, are trying not to get killed by a Widowmaker who now everybody has to be in front of the cart sorry, around the cart, and is within pure line of sight mode of her, that where she could just go around between the signs. Or not between the signs, but around the sign at least, right? And they now know that you're coming. They now know that this is going to happen. So what do you do? Because you were the only one that saw the threat for Widowmaker and decided to make a change to go do something about it. The rest of your team didn't because they didn't see that there was a problem with that until they lost and go, oh, why, didn't, why did nobody do anything about this? It's like, what do you mean? Or they'll have no idea. It's like, I don't know why we lost. I guess they're, you know, our somber as shit. It's like, no, they're not. They did their job. They absolutely did their job, which was to go and deal with the most oppressive thing that was on there, which was a Widowmaker with basically unlimited range. Who could basically insta-kill your thing. Your, uh, get headshots on you, can kill your squishies, kill your support. Right? They could kill the one that's the most impactful, Baptiste. They could do all of that. They could have free range of shooting at the uh, immortality field because all it will take is two shots anyway because they have the hide advantage. All of that sucks. Absolutely. If you're going to have Widowmaker still have the grapple, I don't know how, I don't know what his suggestion, Samuel, if you've got to this point, I would love to hear a suggestion as to what you think it could realistically do in order to help with the grapple. If, if she's going to be there, the only thing I could uh, assume or imagine is that some abilities don't work on her. Like, if she's able to grapple, life grip shouldn't work on her for a good amount of time. There, should, uh, there shouldn't be able to do something that effectively is like, oh, now you're high enough. Oh, they're still going for you. Let me roll life grip out of you. It's like, no, there should be a massive cooldown for that. Specifically because they use their ability to effectively disengage from a fight so far away that it's going to take, unless, you know, they're a dive character, a while to get to them, okay? If they go from Han, uh, Havana, they go from looking down the main road to behind the sign on the right, that's going to take a lot to get there. If they are not a dive character, right? If they are a tracer, how many blinks did it take him to get up there? To now that person's now across from them and they can't reach them. Okay, uh, Far could get shot out of the sky, but she could instantly get grappled. And go away. But Farah could still get her. Unless, you know, the Watermaker shoots her. Echo could be able to instantly burst her down. Alright? Which is a problem that should... Well, I've, you're, if we're going to have that, you can at least, you know, suggest that as well. To something that could happen for that. Like, Echo uh, effectively can burst down a target really quickly. Especially if it's Watermaker. Just by how you play. Specifically, Samuito. Where you throw your bombs. Where you're able to shoot at her. And you instantly beam her down. You can kill her really quickly if she doesn't get the headshot on you, if you're able to sneak up on her. That's the hard part, though. But if she tries to leave, you can at least follow her. Any other character that can't do that, that cannot kill her quickly, will die. Even Reaper can die. And he could teleport to her. He can follow her. And she could just turn around, wait for him to come out of his teleport, and shoot him in the head. And he's dead. That's not fun for him. That guy's supposed to be frontlining and killing tanks. Not die being a Widowmaker. The only thing I could imagine it being better is to give the other snipers other abilities as well. I like the fact that Anna was able to dash. Or uh, it was able to leap like Baptiste. We saw her when she was debuted in the cinematic or in the trailer for her. For I forget if it was for BlizzCon or whatever. But her opening trailer, debuting the character, she was on top of Anubis. She can't do that without being TP'd. I would love to see Ana with the uh, grapple. Or Ana with the ability to jump or climb. She's a sniper. She's supposed to be able to have range advantage. Just like Widowmaker. Not sit on the ground while the DPS Widowmaker is on the high ground. And has 
full observancy over it. And she could effectively watch everything. She's like looking around. I was like, oh, where's that? Where's that? Oh, there you go. And Anna can't even see her. No glint. And no ability to duel her by getting up on the same equal level as her. Because then instead of having to watch for just the group, you now have to watch everything to make sure that the Anna isn't able to counter snipe you. And maybe give Anna headshots. She's a sniper character. She should have a headshot. If she gets a headshot on her teammate, it should do double healing. Or at least significantly more healing. Because smaller target. It should be the same thing for when she gets headshots. Maybe not double. Because that's going to be crazy. Or maybe double. Who knows? Maybe even change Widowmaker's headshot damage to be from 2 to 1.5. And reduce it down. And only make it be 2 when it's closer range. Maybe even half to what it is. Maybe instead of it being... Maybe being like 30 meters away. To where the point to where like if you do not hit your shot, that person who's in front of you is going to kill you because they were going to do that anyway. They got close enough to you because you messed up and you weren't paying attention that they got so close enough to you that they are now within range of killing you. And I feel like that would be a better option, but I don't know. Character in the game where you could be 10 and 10 on DPS and still be holding the lobby hostage. And that is all you need to know. Go watch a game in Masters or above. Go watch a game where there's a Widow. And a ton of these games where the Widow would literally be 10 and 10. If you took that player off of Widowmaker and put them on any other hero in the game, the gameplay yeah, experience for the other team immediately becomes 10 times better. And that player is five times worse. Every time. Yeah, because they hard focus time, into being Widowmaker. Every single time. And then that's the problem It is that. ludicrous. Is that if it is they ludicrous. one trick she is a, a more maker, egregious example they of what would was. But Hanzo lose gets if they had to switch to anything else. The moment they get dive and the moment they don't get safe from their team. And I don't give a shit what when anybody says. It's fucking You guys true. just lose. Like, once you effectively have decided to become a one-trick, you're not able to do anything else. I was a one-trick for Reinhardt. I couldn't do anything else when it came to other tanks, which is why I had the other tank, the off tank, to help me. Since going Overwatch 2, I've now had to learn other roles. I can now play tanks that I never could. Orisa, Ramatra, what else? Not really ball. Maga. Right? Characters that actually require aim. Instead of just swinging a hammer and and putting up a shield occasionally. Right? I like that. However, that doesn't really help if you're a one trick and you're getting hard countered. Because at that point, the experience for that player sucks because they made that, yes, they made the decision and their team isn't helping them and their team is flaming them. And if they try to switch to anything else, they won't know what to do. They have an idea, but they don't have the time invested into it like they do with Widowmaker. And if their team isn't trying to help them, and they're constantly dying first, then that team is constantly losing the game. And they're not liking that. And that's also what sucks. You have to at least branch out a little bit. If you don't, this is what happens. Or at least start getting like friends that can do it with you. But even still, if they don't come to help you, you're basically on your own. It is fucking true. I am sick of it. It ruins the game. It is the most unfun experience to play against. Especially if your solo tank player does not play a dive character or a shield tank. Yes. Or plays a hero that can actually contest that Widowmaker. Yes. By themselves. It's miserable for everybody. Blizzard, if you claim to want a quality Even experience Even when I played Widowmaker 5, and I wasn't good at it, the claim and have done I would the changes die Because they would constantly go after me because they understood that, that I was a shot. Even though I sucked. Single kill elimination targets, single they would still go after me. Things are too oppressive, especially in a format where one kill oftentimes completely dictates the fight. You need to address the most overpowered one shot in the game, especially because you've made peeling dive significantly easier over time in Overwatch 2, with mm -hmm. every single support ability becoming burst heal, auto heal, whatever it may be. Widowmaker needs to get changed. With Life Weaver's it is uh, healing that being not her. better now, I do that not also care how the hero out. performs in silver. If you are going to gut Hanzo, and Doomfist, and remove Doomfist one shot, and Junkrat's one shot, and Hogs, and attempt to remove Hogs one shot, you absolutely must address Widowmaker's one shot. One shots mm -hmm. do not have a place in 5v5 if this is the the path that you guys have chosen. You refuse to address the and most what they've one, said, and your hypocrisy. Right? They just said that it was bad. Must you have to stop. Be here. held accountable for that. Hashtag nerf Widowmaker. And I'll tell you what, guys, I'm, I have half a mind to tell everybody to report every single Widow player you see on ladder because if the devs won't do it, take it to your own hands and abuse their dog shit system. And I don't care how no, mad I don't people. Seriously, do that? she shouldn't get to sit there and ruin the fucking game like for everyone else. Fair. 
But then because again, the devs will not practice what I mean, they preach. They who do you blame? Do you blame the Widowmaker for being good at the game and actually getting kills, or do you blame your teammates for not attempting to help you out? Because it's been seasons now, and they refuse to address it properly. Which which do you pick? The, time the one character who stop, invested stop, their time into a Nerf character that they're good at, stupid. So, or yeah, the teammates that refuse to help you out when I, you, you know, I challenge anybody try to fix to a problem this with me that they the refuse to fix because Seriously, they don't want to get off their tank. About this. Let's have an open discussion about this. Explain to me how if we have claimed and, and gone down the path of one-shots being oppressive in this game, we remove every other one-shot in the game, but we do not even touch the hero with the strongest one. In fact, the only thing they did to Widowmaker in this game was buff her HP and then revert it when it was when it broke the game in the worst season of Overwatch, which was Overwatch se Season 2. Overwatch 2 mm -hmm. Season 2. Well, she was always at 200, and then they dropped it down nerf to grapple, 175. Nerf grapple, nerf something. She needs to be extremely punishable if she has the lethality that she does. And you can sit here and argue, well, that would gut the hero. Well, you made the decision to go to 5v5 and it ruined the game. I don't I'm care. Sorry. Tough shit. You got it. I mean, my hero, Reinhardt, too. has been changed a lot. Too. His shield's been reduced. Right? You removed the fun for everybody else except for Widow? Most impressive one? Yeah, bullshit, Blizzard. Bullshit. Get your shit together, Aaron. It's ludicrous. Anyway, um, tough. So, going off of that, I don't play Widow. I don't like playing Widow. I don't like playing any sniper character that requires a, a single action shot. I like the multi action, which is why I prefer Hanzo and Ana. Because you could just fire constantly. And yeah, you'll miss your shots. Uh, but you'll be able to at least hit more than be like, oh man, I gotta line this one up. And if I miss, then that's it. It's done. It's a higher skill ceiling. I get that. But I've always gravitated towards any character that was a sniper that had the ability to fire quickly. For my first game I ever played, Battlefield Bad Company 2. I never liked playing with the 50 cal. Even though that did the most damage and had the most range and was, you know, it had the slowest fire rate. But you could kill anything. You could kill anything. I prefer the SVB. Not the other SVB. I prefer the one that had the 10 round clip. Yeah, it did less damage. But I was able to get more shots off. And I prefer that. But there's also Gears of War. I never liked playing with the long shot. I loved Judgment because Paddock's gun, the one from the UIR, was a 10 round burst. Or at least a 10 round clip sniper rifle. I destroyed with that guy. I played mostly him whenever I played Judgment. When we were doing Overrun, right? An amazing game mode, by the way. Loved it. When we played that, I didn't go with the shotgun engineer Baird, even though I absolutely love Baird and I'm going to name my kid after him whenever I have a kid. I didn't play Cole because I don't care for the grenades, insta-kill that hits you and you die. And he throws ammo. I don't care about uh, Sophia when she could throw a stem grenade and effectively keep your ass alive unless you were so close to a shotgun, it would kill you regardless, period. Or she could roll up on you and blast you with a sawed-off shotgun, which was hilarious, by the way. And I did do that. It was always a, the fun thing. I always loved taking on people. on. But the person I put the most amount of time into was Paddock. I put a time into a sniper character. I could just throw out my spot grenade, look down, and just start unloading on them. And I would get kills. When they had the, the Locust version of it, the bolt action one, I preferred that over the long shot. Yeah, it didn't have a scope, but effectively it was a bolt action rifle that you can fire. And if you got a headshot, you got a headshot and you killed the person. But that required some skill. If not, body shots. But even then, you knew that was least effective. Which is why people would always go between the walls and start meleeing, which is what I did. I was an asshole. I don't like single shots. I don't. That's why I had contemplated buying the gold gun for Hanzo. A character who... I'm not even good with anymore and was barely starting to be okay with but I loved the fact that he was able to do that I want to get it for Anna I don't want to get it for Widow even though she by Sam Andrews uh, opinion which is fact it is true she's not fun when I had brought this up as a point of context I brought up during the OWC Sam Mito if anybody had seen his recent video immediately screenshots right here immediately People were complaining about him saying that he was a whiner, that they don't watch it because he's a whiner. And I was curious because if they didn't watch it, so I, and I just simply put, well, he's talking about Widowmaker and her one shot. And people, that took the chat to just insan insanity that I never, I didn't think that was going to happen from a comment. What had happened 
as they then started breaking down, well, what about this being a one shot? Oh, what about this being a one shot? Uh, you know, and it was a one shot combo for Junkrat. But people were saying it was a one shot, and that was upsetting some people. It's like, well, it's just technically not a one shot because it's two. It's like I don't care about your grammar. I don't care about the nuance. The point is, it's a combo that effectively will one shot you. Uh, yeah, it takes a grenade and a mine, but you still die pretty quickly. I knew that that person eventually was like losing it because he said, or at least they said, based on how chat is, Symmetra's orb is technically a one shot by how things were devolving and i didn't get to see the whole thing because i was technically driving and working while owc was going because i were graveyard so i only got to see bits and pieces but the bits and pieces that i saw were insane i was like why are people fighting about this what's going on what's happening i make one comment and bring up one person and immediately it's vinegar and vitriol that he's a whiner it's like did you watch the video why do you think he's a whiner why are you complaining about this there's nothing wrong it's fine it's fine People are allowed to have opinions. This, sh this shouldn't be the uh, hard stance. This isn't politics. This is gaming. This isn't the Republicans versus the Democrats. This isn't one party versus another. This is a video game. This is not Samito versus Frito with the 6v6 versus the 5v5 groups. It has effectively become a war zone. And the moment anybody has any opinion that differs from yours is immediately dismissive. And you brand them as somebody that... You want to have as much distance from them as physically possible. So even if they have a valid opinion about something, you will dismiss it. And even if you do listen to it, you immediately go, well, I mean, it's the character. It's part of the character. They are allowed to have different things. They could have different things and they could change. We've reworked a lot of these characters, added the abilities to them, removed abilities, switched abilities. And we're now in the precipice. We're about to go into 6v6 whenever that comes. And that's going to be an actual defining moment. Was 6v6 the problem or is 5v5 the problem? It is balancing something that can happen effectively. And we won't know until it happens. My name is Will. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.